Hi there folks and welcome back. And in a previous blog post we talked about investment risk and I had promised then that we would talk about ways that we might be able to measure that investment risk. So today I'd like to talk about really two things here, two ways to measure risk or two of the most common ways to measure risk with regard to investments. And those are standard deviation and beta. So first off with standard deviation at the risk of oversimplifying it um, I would liken it to a roller coaster. It would basically, standard deviation would, would measure the, the ups and downs, the loop-de-dupes of the roller coaster. In other words, to simplify it in investment terms, it's really going to measure the overall or total risk or volatility with an investment. So, and I'll get into a few more details in the actual blog post in the notes, but if you look at investment, it's quote-unquote normal return or it's mean average return what you'd expect to see its standard deviation is going to measure how far it deviates from that normal or mean return that you would see so back to the roller coaster it's going to measure the heights the the highs and the lows of the roller coaster and how far up and down it goes from its normal course it's kind of even keel so that standard deviation again I'll get into a few more details in the actual notes and post on the blog but just remember standard deviations measuring overall total risk and volatility from its normal or mean return. And then enter beta is a comparative measure of risk. So if we want to see how one investment is doing to another compared with another, that's really where beta comes in to help us understand the variability of returns from one investment to another. So it's really only useful in in the comparison. In other words, beta in and of itself does not tell us really anything. Only until we compare it with something meaningful does it really become a useful tool. So back to our roller coaster analogy there, beta would be comparing the loop de dupes and the ups and downs of one roller coaster in a meaningful way to another roller coaster. In other words, if we use beta to analyze one roller coaster, and will help us in a meaningful way compare it to another. So again, at the risk of oversimplifying that, um, that's really what beta is all about. So a beta of one would mean the two two comparisons or the two investments are would mo move in tandem. When one goes up, we'd expect the other one to go up. A beta of less than one, we would expect it the highs and lows to be less pronounced. In other words, when one goes up. The other one would not go up quite as uh, as high. Likewise, when the other one goes down, the one that we're using that has a beta of less than one would typically less go down less. So, if we look at a investment comparison, let's say we've got the S and P 500 is kind of a surrogate for the market. If we've got an investment that has a beta of 1.25, we would expect that investment to go up 25% more than the stock market in general or the S&P 500. Likewise, we would expect it to go down 25% more in if we have an investment or stock with a beta of 0.75, it would go up three-fourths of the way um, when the S&P 500 is going up, it would go up, we'd expect it to go up about three-quarters of the way or 0.75%. Likewise, when it's going down about three-fourths of the way down, in other words, not quite far as down. So. Again, beta is really only useful when the comparisons are substantially similar. In other words, if there's meaningful similarities. So that's where R squared, it's not a measure of risk, but a measure of correlation. In other words, how alike are these two comparisons that we're making? So R squared, I won't get into a whole lot in this video, but I will put it in some of the notes here in the blog post because it is meaningful because R squared, that number will tell us how meaningful beta will be. In other words, if we've got an R square that's telling us beta is useful because they're alike in similar ways or meaningful ways, then beta is going to be a useful number. If the R squared is telling us that they're not a good comparison, beta is not going to be a good useful number for us. So we've talked about two ways here, standard deviation, beta. Standard deviation, just measuring overall risk the peaks and valleys, the highs and lows and loop-de-doops of an investment. Beta is comparing one investment to another in measuring uh, the loop-de-doops and what we'd expect gives us information from one to the other 
when we compare them in a meaningful way and that's where R squared helps us determine if those comparisons are meaningful. In a future post I'll get into risk adjusted return things like trend ratio, sharp index, and the Jensen's alpha. Those are three ways to take this, these measures of risk and actually use them to compare actual returns of our investments. But for now, we'll, we'll focus just on measuring risk with standard v deviation and beta. And again, I'll put some more details in the notes in the actual blog post. Thanks again, and we will catch you next time.